quantitative sensory testing in the clinic as another aspect of this probably sensor discriminative domain. We're going to start again. If you want to pull out your smartphones, and uh, Dave here is going to try and push this online as well. Here's a question for you. Which of the following is not considered quantitative sensory testing? Not. <laughs> Looks like it's between survival range and current perception threshold. The correct answer here would be uh, survival range of motion. It would not be considered quantitative sensory testing. Okay. Maybe quantitative testing, but it's not necessarily testing the sensory system. Okay. Uh, current perception threshold would be um, amount of electrical current required before somebody recognizes that it's actually there. And so that is part of quantitative sensory testing. So um, we're starting to hear more and more about this idea of quantitative sensory testing, even though it's not necessarily new. Um, pain thresholds to different stimuli have been around since uh, I was able to go back and find the late 1800s that people have been doing some version of this. And uh, interestingly though, I guess more recently, it's actually becoming more clinically popular, I think in large part because of sort of the advancements in technology that you know, things are becoming more accessible, that we can actually start to do some of these things in the clinical environment, where up to this point, really, they had been reserved for, you know, the lab, okay, because they're fairly expensive things to do. We choose a stimulus, we apply it, usually in a steadily increasing way, and normally, if we're, if we're talking about pain threshold, we're asking the patient to say something, or click a button, or click a mouse, as soon as that sensation changes from sort of comfortable whatever, whether it's pressure or current or whatever, to pain. Um, that's not always the case. Vibration threshold, for example, is not a pain necessary test. Pain, or sorry, vibration is just when you start to identify or appreciate vibration here. But when we're talking about pain threshold, it's the moment at which the sensation changes from pressure to pain. Then we can also talk about tolerance which is how much of this can you take before it's unbearable or intolerable. Clinically, I would not recommend you do pain tolerance testing. The patients probably won't come back to see you again. You don't need to go and push as hard as they can until they cry out in pain. However, pain threshold testing can be done. The pain threshold testing is something that I'm hoping we're going to start to see a little bit more because, again, it seems to give us different information than pain intensity, location, quality, that sort of thing, and may start to give us more information on the mechanism of pain. I, once again, I, I refer to this as a psychophysical measure. What I mean by that is there's certainly a physical component to this. I need to appreciate that you're applying some kind of maybe pressure to my skin or to my muscles. But there's also the psychological side. And anyone who's ever had this done, I've brought a couple of alcometers here today, you can try it out if you want. Um, the first time you do it, you kind of go, I'm not sure if this is pressure or pain. Yeah, I, I guess that's pain. Okay, there. Um, and that's, that sort of seems to be the way this kind of works. So it's clearly some kind of, there's a psychological filter occurring where the person has to decide, is this, is this pressure? Is this pain? You know, I'm not quite sure. Usually the second or the third time things change just a little bit. So it is a psychophysical measure. I also mention that because, again, we have to rely on the patient's self-report. So while we sometimes refer to this as an objective measure, it's not an objective measure, it's a subjective measure, because the patient is the one who's clicking the button or saying, yes, this hurts. And therefore, it's uh, suspect or, or it's uh, vulnerable to any other sort of biases associated with self-report measures. For example, the, there's a, there, there appears to be a sex interaction um, that when males are being tested by attractive females, there's a different pain threshold than when males are being tested by different, I want to say unattractive females, but that sounds really rude, by men, by other males. <laughs> um, interestingly, that relationship doesn't seem to exist in females being tested. I guess y'all just don't care. <laughs> I ain't trying to impress anyone. Yeah, it's right. um, so there seems to be some interaction there. Okay, so my point being that this is, well, well, it was at one time, I think, pitched as an objective indication of pain sensation or sensitivity. It's not. It's still a subjective tool. Okay? So, pretty good, a psychophysical tool. Um, 
it's possible that you can identify dysfunction in certain neural pathways, um, in particular with the current perception thresholds, which we're not really going to talk about today, um, or the vibration thresholds, vibrating at different frequencies, or applying uh, current at different hertz, um, may, we think, preferentially activate, say, like C fibers versus um, A delta or A beta fibers, okay? That's, more, that, that's really more still reserved for the lab, so we're not doing that in clinic yet. Um, Interestingly, though, I guess from a quantitative perspective, from a statistical perspective, these are usually inherently linear. Again, so the difference between one and two kilograms of force and ten and twelve kilograms, or sorry, ten and eleven kilograms of force is still one kilogram of force. So it is inherently linear, and that again makes everybody happy when you're doing statistical analysis on these things. Clinicians don't care, but researchers think. Types of quantitative sensory testing. So there's pressure, sometimes called mechanical pain threshold. Um, we sometimes have thermal pain threshold, which can be cold or hot, vibration threshold, and electrical current. There are some other ones out there as well, but these are the more common ones that you can see described. And really, to date, I'm going to say only pressure pain threshold has been accessible to sort of the non-specialist clinics, and largely because of the availability of these things from a price standpoint. Um, you can get them anywhere from sort of fairly basic kind of analog, just a, a dial on a spring that moves up as you start to put pressure on the skin, through to very sophisticated digital systems that cost upwards of twenty twenty five thousand dollars The ones that I use, the ones that I'm going to be uh, using here today, using for demonstration, are from a company called uh, Wagner Instruments. You know, I get absolutely no money from Wagner Instruments, just clear, I have no relationship with them whatsoever. Um, but um, I've, I've been using these for years. We've done a fair bit of work on them now. We've actually published four papers um, using these instruments, and they seem to work just fine. And the nice thing about these ones is they're uh, $400, so $395 US. So those are the ones we'll be looking at today. 